Thank you, Ariat and Total Boat, for sponsoring this week's video. Hey guys, and welcome back to another wood brew video. In today's video, Molly and I are building this really awesome plywood platform bed for a local client. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. As always, please like this video if you at all find it enjoyable or useful. It really goes a long way in helping this video perform and helping us out. So without further ado, let's get started. So got all of our pieces cut out now. I used a table saw and the cross cut slide on the table saw to cut all of these pieces. It took quite a while, I'm not gonna lie, but that's primarily because there's just a lot of little pieces in the mix of these. So that's where having the plans helps out tremendously. But with that as well, I also took some time to label every single piece as it came off the table saw. And I also put the good side up where I'm labeling. That way I know which side I want people to see. And I also took some time to mark the edges about where the joinery needs to be cut because one of the easiest things to mess up is accidentally not mirroring parts correctly and getting the wrong sides on the wrong parts and, and or cutting the joinery backwards. And speaking of joinery, we have these two bits are gonna basically build this entire bed right here. So this first bit is the rabbiting bit set from white side bits. This one has the Astro coating that Bits and Bits does. And then this one over here is an undersized uh, three quarter inch plywood dado. This is actually comes in a, in a set here, but basically what this is is it's slightly under three quarters of an inch so that when you cut a dado with it, it actually matches up with the true thickness of three quarter inch plywood. This one also again has that Astra coating on it. And what that does is it really helps extend the life of these bits and uh, it, it's a great value. So if you're spending a lot of money on these bits, I highly recommend you check out Bits and Bits. We have a coupon code and we'll link these two in the description below, but it's going to help make this investment last long, longer because these bits aren't cheap. But as you'll see, they're worth the money because we're going to use just these two bits to make this entire bed. So uh, with that said, I'm going to get go ahead and start cutting in the joinery and then we'll get to assembly. Future Dylan here, we decided not to use that rabbiting bit. It didn't work the way that we wanted to, kind of an idea that we thought would be a smart way to use it. And it didn't work out because the plywood slightly less than three quarters of an inch, but I digress. Anyway, we decided to use the table saw instead, but we have a video coming out later this week, actually in just a couple of days that it's gonna explain all the joinery we used in this video. So if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel and you'll get that video in just a couple of days. All right, let's get to cutting this joinery.
All right, with all the joinery cut, it's time to start assembling everything together. And we need to sand everything down to 220 grit all inside of every box. That way we don't have to do that once it's assembled because that will be a nightmare. And when we're assembling these boxes, they're all done the exact same way. We're just gonna use some wood glue and some pin nails to hold everything together and then clamp it tightly. And that's gonna be all of the structure of the box. It's incredibly strong joints, so we're not worried about adding any additional fasteners. But one thing that I will say that we made a mistake on during this build was adding too much glue because some of these boxes are really hard to remove that glue when it squeezes out. So whenever you do this, add a tiny bit of glue. You don't need a significant amount and maybe even tape the inside faces. I even thought about that, didn't do it. And I was left using a chisel cleaning up glue for quite a while. So once we have everything assembled, we'll get on to finish. But now we just need to get every one of these boxes put together. All right guys, we're to the finishing stages of this project. I'm gonna talk about how we're actually finishing the bed. So in this project, we're gonna be using Total Boats Halcyon Clear. And this is the gloss version here that also comes in a satin version. And then both of these also have an amber option as well. Now, whenever you're applying this, you want to make sure that you're applying the gloss as your build coats. And then if you prefer the satin look, just apply the last coat or the last two coats with the satin just to make everything matten down. This actually has a flattening kind of agent in it and it can cloud the finish. So you don't wanna do it over like five or six coats or else you could have sort of a cloudy finish. It's meant to be the final coat. So be sure you do that if you decide to use this product. Total Boat is a big supporter of our channel, so if you do want to try some of this out, you can check the link in the description below. There is a coupon code down there, and that also helps us out if you buy through that link. Now, the reason why we like this finish to not just you know talk about applying it, the reasons why we actually like it is because it is water-based, it is extremely easy to apply, and it goes on really fast. So this is a client project. We have to get these things in and out of our shop as quickly as possible. And we're able to apply three coats in one afternoon of this finish. And then the next day we're able to apply the final coat and the project is done and out the door. And we feel really confident about the durability of this product. That's why we like to use it in our shop. So the way that we're going to apply it, it's a little bit different than what is necessarily recommended on here. This is what we found works really well for indoor products. So what we like to do, we like to get one of our mixing cups and we like to pour as much as we think we will need in this cup and then do a, a simple calculation to figure out what 18% of that volume is and then we add that much of water in. So basically, we're just gonna be thinning this down by about 18% and that works really, really well. We found for getting several coats on quickly and also keeping it really thin and nice and smooth. One thing that you can run into with a varnish is that they're heavy and you can put them on just about as heavy as you want. And for an indoor project, we found that to be unnecessary. And also it looks a little bit nicer uh, if you do this sort of thinning method, it speeds up the process and everything. So we're gonna pour it in, mix it up, and then use one of these filters to pour it actually into our sprayer container. That is make sure there's no clumps or debris that gets into our sprayer. And if you don't have a sprayer, a good option is just a foam brush. We found it works a lot better than a bristle brush. So however you decide to apply it, I like to do a thinned coat all the way through. So on the recommended section here, it will tell you to do a thinned coat on the first two coats. And then after that, you can do a normal uh, layered coat of any thickness really. So we tend to like to keep things thinned down a bit throughout the entire process to help with our sprayer, but also to keep those layers really, really thin. We'll do three coats, wait overnight, then we'll use some 320 grit sandpaper to smooth everything out. This is just a very light pass over everything with this. And then we'll wipe all that off and spray one, potentially two final coats with our sprayer, again, still thinned out. And if we decide to go with a satin look, that's when we'll add our satin in over our gloss. So that's the finish we decided to use. Again, guys, if you want to check this stuff out, there's links in the description below.
All right, guys, we got this entire bed built. We also pre-assembled it here in the shop. Not everything's screwed completely together, but we wanted to make sure it all went together. We're about to load it up into the truck and deliver it. Really happy so far with the way it came out and excited to see what it looks like in its final spot. So while Molly and I are headed to deliver this bed, we wanted to take a second to talk about today's sponsor, Ariat. So you guys have probably seen Molly and I repping the Ariat stuff a lot recently, and that's because we've both been thoroughly enjoying it. I have specifically been wearing this pair of pants in a couple different colors and this pair of boots a lot, basically every single day. I really like them because they fit me well. I have a hard time finding stuff that fits me well because I'm a pretty small guy, but also they're like breathable and they have a little bit of stretch to them, which is nice. And I just really, really like these. They're actually fairly inexpensive compared to most uh, nice workwear pants. I'll leave a link in the description below to these pants and this pair of boots. I'm proud to be working with a company like Ariat because they have been putting a lot of effort into creating a workwear that's specifically designed for women. Like we're basically wearing the exact same thing today. Look. Just so Dylan is wearing the rebar dura stretch canvas pants and I'm basically wearing the same pants but in denim and in the women's version and you can just tell the fit of the, both of these compared to the, the men's and the women's. Mine like kind of hug around my hips, my thighs and then they flare out at the bottom so I can actually put boots on underneath my jeans. Now these do have a pocket just like those do for your phone, for your pencil and whatnot. And the front pockets are actually deep, which you won't find in a women's pair of jeans. So this is actually super, super nice. And also they are so durable. I have been wearing gym leggings in the shop for so long. So it's finally nice to have a dedicated, dedicated clothes for the shop. I think they look pretty nice too. These leg, these these legs, these jeans. What do you say to me every time I walk in the door? Mm -hmm. There you go. Howdy doody. Howdy doody, ma'am. You looking nice. <laughs> so I'm also wearing the Macy six inch women's work boot. I'm not wearing long socks, so it looks a little funky right now. <laughs> but these do come in a composite toe version. I do not have the composite toe version, but I really like these boots. Also, if you work in the world where you need FR clothing, they also make women's FR clothing. This shirt doesn't is not FR rated, but FR stands for flame resistant. So if you work in an environment that requires that, they actually make women's workwear that has that in it as well, that still cut nicely yeah. for women. So if you need that, check area it out as well. All the stuff that we're wearing, we'll put links in the description below. We honestly back every, literally everything we're wearing. I, we've been wearing this stuff for a while and really, really enjoy it. And we're very, very happy and proud to be able to partner with a company like Ariat and also show with you guys this stuff. So specifically, if you're a lady that's been looking for some stuff to wear that actually fits well, I've seen the struggle. I know Molly's lived the struggle. So check the links in the description below. You get 10% off if you use the link down there and using the link helps us out a little bit. So let's get this bed delivered and put together.